Hi, and thanks for joining. It's Patty from PS Paper Crafts, and I wanted to show you how to make this card. I'm using this new paper. It's a celebration paper, and it is really pretty cool. Um, it is called the Bedazzle 6x6 Specialty Paper. You get eight sheets of 6x6, and it's really, it's dazzling. <laughs> it's really pretty, but the thing is you can color it with Stampin' Blends. So it's pretty hefty, um, thick, so when you run it through your die cutting machine, you might want to run it through a couple of times. And uh, you can use it as is, as a background, but what I did was I colored these leaves with Stampin' Blends, and I thought they just turned out beautifully. So let's get started. Um, I have some of them cut. I wanted to cut one just to show you. So I have these cut already, and then I'll color them. So I have uh, this big maple leaf and then these other leaves, and I'll cut one more of these. And I'm using Old Olive as my card base and some ribbon. So the intricate leaves dies, it comes actually in a bundle if you wanted to get the gorgeous leaves. There's no sentiments or anything, but you can use these leaves to cut out these, or you can do the intricate look. Um, which is what I use for this. And then on the inside, I did stamp these leaves. So um, the other thing I did was I used this Timber 3D embossing folder. And let's do that first, and then we'll get to the cutting um, of that last leaf. So I have a piece of basic white, and I'm just going to run it through my die cutting machine, die cutting and embossing machine. And I like to run it through this way and try to line up with the Stampin' Up! line over here, just to make sure it's straight. On something like this, it really doesn't matter how straight it is. But let me get my machine. So I have my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And I'm going to use the base plate number one. And then I'll run this through. I like to put the folded side through this way. And then I'll use my... 3D embossing folder plate number four. So that's specifically for 3D embossing folders. And I'll just run it right through. I'm up in New York for a couple of weeks at my daughter's house, so <laughs> I'm a little bit, in, I'm in her bedroom, in my bedroom, where I'm staying, and I have this makeshift craft room set up here. So just bear with me if it gets a little bit weird with me moving things in and out because I'm in this little tiny table right here. So we have this embossed. You can use either side. There's a debossed and an embossed side. So we can decide on that. And while we have the machine out, I'll put this aside, get my other plates, and then we'll just die cut that one leaf, the last leaf that's left. Now, I just wanted to give you a tip. I usually have a bottom plate and a top plate. I did a little bit of cutting in here and ruined it. <laughs> but I'm going to cut this kind of upside down. With some of the intricate um, dies, it's easier. Let me just find that piece. It's easier to, uh, or it cuts better, I would say, if you cut it upside down. I have that little piece here. Let me find it. So I'll take this little piece and my die and usually I would do my die cutting this way put it down put the top plate but for this one I'll put the die down first with the cutting blades facing up and I'll put this down over it and you just have to make sure that it's covered because you're not seeing it and then I'll run this through and I will run this through back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and cut and it does cut pretty well, but this is a thicker paper. I'm trying to do this slow so I don't, not too loud. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it this one last time. So the thicker paper, it's just better, easier if you cut it a couple of times or run it through a few times. Let me get rid of this. So now I'll take my, um, my tool and my, my little mat here and just brush these off. They brush out pretty easily. There, see how clean that is? So let's put this back and put this aside. All right, and now I wanna get a piece of scrap paper. 
have everything on the bed behind me. <laughs> and I'm going to color all of these. So I use Stampin' Blends and they really color, color beautifully. I tried first to just color the piece and then cut it out. And I found that it was getting um, on my plates, the color. So it dries quickly because it's alcohol, but for some reason I was getting it on my plate. So I decided to, uh, to cut them first. So I'm gonna use the thick end. This is Dark Rich Razzleberry. And I'm just gonna color this very easily. And I'll speed this up. Um, I'm using the Dark Rich Razzleberry for this. And then for the small ones, I'm using Dark uh, Cinnamon Cider and Dark Old Olive for that maple leaf. Okay, now I'll do the smaller one. And I wanna show you the difference. Sorry, my daughter has two huge German Shepherds and they're downstairs barking. If they keep it up, I'll stop and pick up again. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. They're both pretty. I mean, this would be fine as is, but I wanted to add a little bit of color to make it more fall. Okay, I stopped the video. I'm hoping it's safe now and the dogs start bar barking, stop barking. So I'm going to do this last one in the old olive. And I just really love this. This was not my idea. I've seen a lot of people doing the coloring of this paper and I think it's just beautiful. That's what I love about the stamping blends. They just um, can color anything and they dry quick. They're alcohol, you, you don't wanna color your stamps with them. You want stamp and write markers for that, but um, other things, ribbon, gems, rhinestones, and then you can make everything match your project. So we have these done, let's put this aside. And let's do our sentiment. So the sentiment is from the Inspiring Thoughts stamp set. And I have Sending Healing Thoughts Your Way. You can make this a birthday. You could make it a sympathy. Um, I think it might be a good sympathy. Actually, let's do that. Let's do the With Heartfelt Sympathy. So let me just take that out. And here it is just to have, it's always good to have, unfortunately, a sympathy card. So let me just get it mounted. And I did this in Old Olive. So I'm very tight on space here. <laughs> I'm on a, just a little table in front of a window and hoping that this works. So with heartfelt sympathy, an old olive, and then I'll punch it with, I think this is called a tailored tag punch. I have to label it. And we'll just punch it out. I love having a punch, just simple, punch it out and you're done. So now we can start putting our card together. So the first thing we want to do is add our leaves to this. So I'm trying to decide, I think I'm going to do this side. And I really laid everything out and just tried to figure it out. I should have gone a little bit lower. So actually, let me put the ribbon on. Sometimes I forget to put the ribbon on and then I have to pull it off again, which is not easy, but it's doable. And we'll just add this in the back with a couple of pieces of scotch tape. Just adhere it to the back. Make sure it's straight. And now we can lay our pieces. And I only really put glue on the bottom. I didn't glue all the way up the sides. I think in the little pieces I did that. And we'll just put these behind the green. That looks about right. So now I'll just get my liquid glue and I'm getting it on this main vein up the middle and I'm just kind of 
putting it all around. It will dry clear, so I mean, you don't want it too goopy. And we'll put this one down here. And then we can put this other one down, same thing. It's a brand new glue, so it's coming out a little faster than normal. I took all new stuff with me when I packed up. It's fun to pack up your craft room for a couple of weeks and try to figure out what you need, what you're going to use. Um, and I tried to take a lot of the new product from the new uh, mini catalog so I could display that or demonstrate that. And I love the fall. I'm going to kind of miss the fall up here. By the time it arrives, I'll be gone. So, but that's okay. So now we want to see how this looks. And I'll put this down with dimensionals. And then I'm going to sneak those little other leaves in there on the side. Oh, of course I have glue on me. I always have glue on me. And then everything sticks to me. <laughs> And I have problems. Okay, so let's take the backs off. I tried to get this lined up with the ribbon. And then we'll just put a little bit of glue on these and stick them out the sides. And these I went all the way up to the top with the glue. So there we go. And then we can put this down on the card base and then we'll add a ribbon and we're done. I like to use a liquid glue with anything that's embossed so that it gets all into the, the grooves. What I call the nooks and crannies. And just press this down make sure it's down good and then we want to make a bow with this pretty ribbon and this has a lot of um, gold glitter to it so I thought it would go well with this kind of look it's the fine arts ribbon and it's really beautiful we use this in the last card class that I had and I think it's great for the fall. It's got that kind of, um, you know, rustic look, but then it's got the gold in it. Of course, having glue on my hands doesn't help here. Oh, I'm going to start this over again. <laughs> I'm going to wipe my glue off my hands. Let's try this again. See, I have pieces of ribbon on me. Okay, let's try this again. Making a bow on camera is never fun. I think I might be near the end of this ribbon. I've been using it quite a bit. Okay, we're getting there. All right, that is good. We're going with it. <laughs> Oh, this is like comedy hour here. I think that looks good. So now let's get a glue dot, which I have right over here. And we'll just take it off with the picket tool. I see one here and put it on the back. And then we can put this right down at the bottom. Now you can dress it up with um, some gems or something if you want. I didn't do that. And then let's put some stamped leaves. So I'm going to use Old Olive. And this I'm doing straight on. The other colors I'm stamping off because they seemed to be really dark. So let's put this here. And then... Actually, I think on this one, 
Um, I think I might do sheltering you with love at this time when words fall short. So let me get that going as well. Um, I'm going to just put it on this other block and we'll do that in the green. I didn't have one on the other card. A lot of times with healing or thinking of you, I don't put a sentiment on, but I think this is a good one. Okay, and then we can put this away. Do the cinnamon cider. And I have this one falling from the top, but it's dark, so I'll stamp it on scrap and then stamp it down. And I'll do the same with the rich raspberry. And my rich raspberry looks a little funky. <laughs> I opened it up. I don't know if maybe if it was left open. I'll have to re-ink it, although it doesn't seem too light. But I'll have to scrape the top off. It's got all these little dots on it. So it's an old one. I'm not sure what's going on with it. But isn't that pretty? I love the fall colors. And... Um, I love this stamp because of the way there's little little pieces of little dots around it. So it's um, very pretty. So I'm hoping while I'm here, I get enough videos going on. I am babysitting my grandkids. I'm spending time with my kids. And I'm trying to get cards and videos in between. So, come back for my next one, and um, I'll be using a lot of the new product out of the mini catalog. But again, this paper, I don't know if I really said, <laughs> this is free during celebration um, with a $50 order in the U.S. So I hope you can see it. It's really pretty. I think it would be great for a lot of die cuts, coloring, non-coloring, or even just for, you know, a background layer, for um, a sentiment or something like that. So thanks for joining and I'll see you next time. Bye.